I've given myself over 100 stick and pokes while living in Portland, Oregon. And if there's one step you don't want to ever miss when giving yourself a tattoo in Portland, research. You want to check every corner of the internet to make sure that what you're about to put on your skin isn't going to trigger some dork. Anything can be mistaken as a gang tattoo when you think everybody's white supremacists. So the first thing we're going to check is if the tattoo I'm trying to get is white supremacist. Are cherry blossoms white supremacist? I don't see anything about them yet, so we're going to move on to um, are cherry blossoms Nazi? I am searching on DuckDuckGo right now, and I think I'm actually going to switch over to Google because they have more woke retire. They have more accurate materials for what your average Portlander would know. Three blossoms. Racist. Come on, Cherry Blossom, don't be shy. Get all the way into the room. So far, so good. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Are Cherry Blossoms homophobic? I think we're okay so far. Um, now let's just make sure that the cherry blossoms aren't transphobic. Gangs come up with weird symbols. If there's a transphobic gang out there and their symbol is the cherry blossom and then I get it tattooed on me, I'm gonna be in a world of hurt when I go to my next open mic. We can go a little bit broader and just do our cherry blossoms offensive. In World War II, uh, apparently cherry blossoms became a symbol of kamikaze pilots. You know, those pilots that would get all messed up and crash into the Twin Towers? Because the pilots <laughs> had to have short lives like the Cherry Blossom. But I can't find anybody even saying having Cherry Blossoms is a fit. Okay, what if I do Cherry Blossom Tattoo Offensive? Would Cherry Blossom tattoos be seen as cringy or cultural appropriation on a white person? If anybody had to say something about it, how it's culturally appropriating, you just say, look, I don't know why you're associating cherry blossoms with a particular culture or race, but maybe that's your own problem of your internalized racism. Don't project that on me. And that's what I'll say if we get there. So I think we're good to have a cherry blossom tattoo. We're gonna go for it. After, after, <clears throat> after thoroughly researching your tattoo idea, then you can make your stencil. So. This is stencil paper. It's got um, some sticky stuff and a yellow backing. You don't have to worry about the yellow part. There's gonna be a, a little sheet inside between the black and the white sheet. You're gonna take that out because we allow our black and whites together while we do our stencils. Speaking of which, I just realized I'm appropriating black culture with this Jimi Hendrix t-shirt, so I'm gonna change first. But yeah, this stuff's super easy. You just draw on it. And then on the back side of the paper, the black will transfer, and then you can stick it to your skin, and you got a tattoo stencil. Once you finish drawing, you're just gonna tear off the spot that you drew. Okay. And then we're gonna stick this onto our skin with deodorant, but first, we gotta shave the area. Before you tattoo yourself, you gotta do whatever you can to remove the hair from your skin. You can't tattoo hair. Cause I've heard people use water and then there's definitely like a lot of special products like tattoo goo and stencil stuff or whatever it is that you can use. But my favorite thing to use for applying stencils, speed stick. Apparently Old Spice is good. I'm sure Axe, but you will need a gel. It needs to be a gel deodorant. I like to overdo it in case I, like, don't know exactly where the tattoo's gonna go, but I put it everywhere, and then wherever I want to put it, it'll work. Then you take your stencil that you drew, and this part's the hardest part, but you just gotta line it up and stick it on. Even if I mess it up, you get like a good two or three sticks before you have to redraw it. Ooh, I don't know if I like where this one went. Yeah, it's not right. That's not exactly how I liked it. So I get to do it again. Take another swing of this thing. I think it's good. You can't tell, but it's gonna be good. Anytime you're tattooing, you're gonna wanna have a thin layer of petroleum jelly on the surface of your skin. 
where you're doing it so that the ink doesn't spread around on the surface covering your stencil up. I've got a short video that demonstrates this, so watch that if you want proof. Or you can just trust me and always lube up. I use spoons for my ink because they're easy to clean and reuse. Once you've got it clean enough, then you can really disinfect it with a little bit of that. But don't do that and then say that I said that it was okay if you're going to try to sue me. That's not okay. None of this is okay. But this is how I do it. Choose your color. This one's going to be pink. It's still pretty hot. You want a clean work surface when you're doing tattoos, so push everything off to the side. Now, this is where stick and pokes become a dangerous activity. Dangerous activity. I've got my single-use needle. This thing's sterilized. We know that ink and that spoon are clean. I cleaned my skin beforehand and in between and I'll keep cleaning it in between things. So you just gotta know, people have been tattooing for a millennia, and we have better knowledge of germs now than ever before. So it's never been a safer time than today to give yourself a tattoo. Tattoo artists aren't out there working with some magic information that you can't figure out. They're really just... Doesn't know how to spell. It's really not that much to know. Just, just keep it clean and use tattoo ink. A lot of most infections come from using alternative inks. It's not even like the keeping it clean part that causes a lot of the problems. It's okay, you can do it. You shouldn't do it and I don't recommend you do, but you can. So when you're ready to poke and you've prepped your skin and your materials, get your needle, open it. Once you open this needle, it's go time. The needle wants to taste blood, and you gotta give it to it. Or else, be in a comfortable position. This is not a good example, but pretend that I'm comfortable right now, and that's what something that you should aim for. You're going to make your have your ink in an accessible location and have it in a, in a spot that's not gonna bumble around and spill. It's really easy to clean up, but you just don't wanna spill ink when you're in the middle of this. So just get yourself Comfy and stable, first thing first. Then, when you're ready, dip your needle in the ink. You just dip it in, it's very simple, and then you poke it on your skin. No big deal. Now this needle hasn't touched anything but my skin and that ink. Even if I push all the way down and touch the bottom of the spoon, the spoon's clean, the ink's clean, and my skin's clean. So this needle is clean. And there's nothing to be scared of. Now my rule is I count I count five pokes. Sometimes I do seven. Sometimes I do ten if I'm just feeling antsy. But it's really just those, those first five pokes that get most of the ink in there. When you're poking on it, you're going to think, because there's ink on the surface of your skin now, that you can poke through that ink as much as you want. And as long as there's ink on top of your skin you can just poke that and you're gonna feel like it will work and it will continue to tattoo but you only get five pokes after that it's I'll prove it in another video soon here but just dip just dip a lot technically it's even better if you poke once and then dip again then you're guaranteeing maximum inkage in that poke. You want to go over the stencil lines first. You want to make sure that you have everything from your stencil done before you do any wiping, because once you wipe it, you might lose your whole stencil. So what's only going to be left is what you've poked. So you got to have a good eye. You got to know where you're poking and what you want it to look like so that once you wipe it, you can go back over it again and follow those same lines and get a nice clean image. The first time you do it, you're going to wipe it and you're going to be like, oh, it didn't work. You're going to feel like the image isn't there, this is useless, just you gotta trust yourself and you just gotta do it again. I go over my stick and pokes five times usually just to make them look decent. And if I want it to look really clean, I would go over it six or seven times and really make like a nice image. My All of my tattoos are shitty and that's because a lot of them it's like three times. If you go over it once, you're really not even gonna see it. The first time you go over the tattoo, you're barely gonna see it. That's why you need to keep in mind what you're doing 
so that when you wipe it, you can see where the old lines are, you can finish them again, and then it starts to come through. But yeah, don't lose hope when you wipe it and you can't see your tattoo. It's not gonna come through the first time. You gotta do it a few times. It's gonna take hours. It takes hours to do stick and pokes. You gotta be lonely and bored and dark to do this. So don't even start on one if you're not, if you don't have plans to, to listen to like a whole episode and a half of Joe Rogan before you're gonna finish it. Put on a movie and poke for a long time and think about what you're doing wrong while you do it. Think about your sins and like, not sins, because I'm not Christian, but think about it and like, give yourself a little pain for it. And then when you're done, you have a piece of art that is like, sort of covering that pain, but also like, represents it and what you learn from it while you're thinking about what you're poking. It's all good fun. You're gonna need to take breaks. You don't always have to open a new needle every time you take a break. Just set it down and lean it on the surface of something so that the poke isn't touching so that the point of it isn't touching anything just the air the air isn't gonna infect your wound <sighs> and then I would just get a paper towel with some hydrogen peroxide for when you come back from your little pee break and just wipe off the dry ink and now you've got your, your needles still fine. You don't have to keep opening new ones. If that needle drops and touches something or falls down, I would throw it away. I would put it in like a white claw can or a sun-kissed bottle and throw that in the trash and forget about it. But if you live with anybody else, warn them and maybe separate your sharp needles from other trash. Once you're done poking, you just gotta wipe it off with something clean and you're good to go. This is my girlfriend's Led Zeppelin shirt. And this is hydrogen peroxide. We have fun here. <laughs>